Hey, welcome back Astrodome. We're going to do another kind of off-subject raid coach video here. It's still going in the raid coach category and it's still going to be focusing on a lot of stuff that would be kind of prioritized in the raid coach series, but I'm not going to highlight too much in a raid this time. Uh, I mostly want to just go over spells and how they actually work and how they interact with stuff, right? So just going to jump right into it. We're going to start off with the elixir spells down the list in the order that you unlock them and then go into the dark elixir. First off, we've got the lightning spell. Mine isn't very high. I don't like them. I don't use them, right? One of the big things about this lightning spell, I mentioned it in the video with Logan and I believe another video with somebody else, that this does a lot of area splash damage, right? It shows it right here. Area splash. Get the most out of it that you can. It's got a certain range, so play around with it for a bit. Understand its range, understand its attack pattern, because I think it's fairly consistent. You know, left, right, mid, left, right, mid, something like that. Um, overall, not going to see this in too many raids. Really only dropping it on air defenses get them out of the way you only really need to bring two of them maybe four of them to eliminate two of the air defenses at most okay really nothing else to talk about it just aim it as good as you can get good with them you know take out as many buildings as you can you can place it right on the corner of a building and it'll still destroy it so try to place it you know closer to a certain building and another building. Take out the air defense and an archer tower. Take out the air defense and an archer queen, uh, air sweeper, wizard tower, other stuff along with it. Do as much damage as you actually can with these because they take up a lot of space, right? Two spaces, that's a lot when you can only bring five of these, right? Five or six or something, right? You can only take so much. So make sure that you're getting the absolute most value that you can out of it. Okay, moving into the next one, heal spells, right? I use these quite often because I do a lot of queen walking. And healing spells on queen walks is actually fairly efficient. So, one thing about these to understand is their size, right? It's a ring of healing. Your, hun your uh, troops inside of it will be healed. That's it, right? It's about as easy as you can get. But here's the thing, you need to understand that it only heals them while they're inside of it, which means you need to place these in areas where troops are taking damage and can heal right up, right? If you drop it on a troop while it's moving and it runs out and then starts taking damage, it's not going to get healed, plain and simple. So healing spells, you just need to make sure that they actually are where they need to be to heal, right? Also, it has a certain amount of time that it's up for, right? So it's got like six seconds, eight seconds, 10 seconds, whatever the case may be. I feel like they should probably show you how long it's on there for somewhere, but for some reason they don't. And it shows you how much it'll heal. So say you've got something that's got 2000 hit points and you hit it on it, it's only gonna heal 1800 of it regardless, right? And it's over time, it's not an instant heal. So you need to plan ahead. You need to make sure that you're soaking up damage with this and actually healing out of it, right? Make sure that you're placing it where your troops are headed so that they negate a lot of the damage. Don't want to miss it. Definitely don't want to miss it. And definitely don't want to put this in a place where troops are going to rapidly leave or rapidly destroy the buildings that are hitting it. So you want to put this on tanks that aren't going to hit stuff very hard. You want to put it on mass troops that are not going to really move too fast, but need that quick burst of healing. And then get out of there, right? Such as miners and Valkyries and stuff. Okay, going to go ahead and move on to the Rage spell. I feel like this one is probably the most used and most understood spell. 
right? The speed increase, the damage increase, it's just overall really, really good spell. But you can miss it, right? It's got a certain range, so it's got a certain size. So it's only going to hit the things inside of it, which means you need to be accurate. You need to plan ahead and make sure that you're placing it where you need to place it to destroy as much as you can destroy inside of it. Right, big thing about the damage increase is that it makes it so you can kill things fast. You need to use it on things that deal a lot of damage back to you, such as Inferno Towers or the Town Hall at Town Hall 12. You need to be able to get in and kill it quickly so that it stops hitting you, right? Using it on really small buildings doesn't really do much, right? It's just kind of there. They're kind of wasted at that point. I will say, however, doing a queen walk with a rage spell while she's cleaning up some of those smaller buildings can be highly efficient because then she's just one tapping them usually at max it's a one tap anyway but at lower levels especially it's really nice to have one of these to just kinda power her up and keep her momentum going it's also really really efficient in lava loon raids where your loons are really strong on their own but then they also get the speed bonus and the damage bonus so they just mow over a base with no problem but the big thing about it is that it has a certain amount of time that it's on the ground and you can miss it right if you place it somewhere and your troops don't go in there you're kinda of screwed so you need to be really really accurate with these you need to make sure that your troops are going to actually make it in and utilize the damage, utilize the speed bonus, and get to where they're going next in order to keep that going. Alright, so going on to the next one, jump spell. This one actually does show the duration, which is kind of cool, but it's a spell that's highly revolved around its duration. Bubbles, stop scratching. 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes, okay? Chill. Uh, so, at level 2 it's 40 seconds, and at level 3 I think it's 54 seconds, or something absolutely crazy. Okay, this can actually be used to plan your raids really well. Come on. I'll scratch you for you so that you stop making so much noise. Um... It says area splash because it's just a circle that you place down and then your troops will jump over walls. It's only good for walls. Right here it even says wall slowing you down, make a shortcut. You're going to mostly use these to jump two or three walls. You don't want to use it on just one wall segment, right? It's kind of useless at just one wall segment. You want to be able to, I'll actually just look at my base. You want to be able to jump from this space over here into here to kill all this and into here to kill all this, right? You want to place it like right here so that they can go in and in. You don't want to just place one out here to get them into the base. That's useless. They're just going to split up and go wherever they want. You want to place it in such a way that actually opens the base up, right? So, for instance, up here, these walls can really slow you down. But if you place a jump right in the middle, you can jump from inside of this one all the way into the base, all the way onto the inside. You bring two of them, you can jump from here all the way in, all the way in, and then one more for down here. Boom, you made it all the way in. And I mean, you might be able to place one right up here and then one right in here and actually get all the way from the outside to the inside right it just depends but you need to make sure that you're getting the most out of this spell just like the lightning spell you can place it in certain places to get even more out of it right jump over four walls three walls however many walls you can get you want to place this as accurately as you can so that they get all the way through right Okay, especially because it's got such a long time. You can even place it way before your troops get there, and it gives them a path of targeting that they normally wouldn't have because the wall would be kind of stopping them from going that way. 
but now that there's an easy access over the wall, they can get into that compartment without any question. Okay, gonna go ahead and go on up to the freeze spell. Freeze spells are one of my favorite. I don't use them as often as I could because I feel like there's some better ones, but it's really, really good when you first unlock it only because of the one housing space. If it was two, it wouldn't be worth it. But because it does have only one, you can take a couple of these and be perfectly fine. Now, one thing to note is that free spells have a very short duration. 5.5 seconds. You probably won't even be able to accurately time this ever. Right? It is one of those few things in this game where precision is the most important thing ever right you need to freeze things while they're hitting you before they actually do a ton of damage interruptions and stuff like that right so one thing that i can actually go show you right now since i'm in war and i watched it earlier is this raid with biscuit okay He pulls over the clan castle, and he actually freezes the clan castle troop. He doesn't do it very well, but it's something that you can use the freeze spell for. Drops the poison, drops the freeze, and that interrupts this e-drag for 5.5 seconds. Okay, I'm not worried about this raid, I'm not here to showcase it, I'm just here to show that this e-drag being frozen interrupts its damage entirely all right he could have been more precise and froze both the e-drag and the archer tower so that he negates a little more damage but that's beside the point right he froze the e-drag to negate the damage of the e-drag right and that's big especially for five and a half seconds like i said it's you're not going to notice it as five and a half seconds you're gonna say it's frozen until it's unfrozen right but the big thing about free spells much like lightning spells much like heal spells and jump spells is you need to place them extremely accurate so that you're negating as much as you can right you're gonna need to be freezing max town hall 12s you're gonna need to be freezing eagles you're gonna need to freeze clan castle troops uh, an enemy queen uh a wizard tower that's about to kill something right your freezes are going to be extremely important on placement and timing especially because you can freeze multiple things at once right like i just showed in that little mini clip is you can freeze the e-drag and that archer tower you can freeze the air sweeper and the air defense you can freeze two infernos if they're right next to each other stuff like that where placement of this and timing of this is huge right definitely want to keep that in mind if you're raiding with these constantly right so gonna move on into clone spells clone spells are kind of unique in the fact that as you upgrade it it only gets better right and you're only gonna notice it when it's maxed if you're using certain troops okay I say that because it maxes out at 30. Now if you're raiding with e-drags and you're trying to use anything below, it's not going to ever clone an e-drag. Right? So one thing about this is get it to max and then play around with it. Just because if you're doing it at level 2 you can play around with dragons, but it's not as efficient right because it takes the rehousing space you need it to take more stuff into account right you might get an archer out of that but if you got 30 you can clone a dragon and two loons you can clone an e-drag you can clone six loons you can clone five valkyries you can clone a lot of different stuff with this but one thing that i see a lot with this is mistiming it and cloning either the wrong troop or cloning something that's pretty close to dead. Uh, 
one thing about these is it clones the exact troop. I don't know if it clones them at the exact uh, health that they have or the health that they're capable of having, but I know that it clones the exact troop, so you want to make sure that you're actually hitting the troop that you want to hit, right? If you accidentally clone a loon when you're trying to clone an e-drag, you're shit out of luck because you won't clone the e-drag ever again. It's got a max capacity of 30, which means once it clones 30 troop space, it's done. It's not 30 troops, like you can't clone 30 e-drags. That troop capacity is exactly how much the troop is, right? Housing space, 20. Then clone capacity, 21. It can clone a dragon and then one archer, right? It matches the housing space, not the troop space, right? Because you can say, oh, I've got 10 dragons. Why isn't it cloning all 10 dragons? It's because it's only able to clone 20 space, right? So you need to make sure that you're hitting the right troop that you want to clone and that you're cloning it at a time where it's needed, right? Because if you just clone all willy-nilly because you have it, right? and then you end up in a pit of uh, inferno towers that you could have easily waited until after, and then you have all of the troops available, it's, it's not worth it, right? So timing and kind of just accuracy, like I said, with making sure you hit the right troops with it, that's what's gonna make the big difference on clone spells, all right? We're done with the elixir. We're going into the dark elixir. Personally, I try to only bring one of any of these, and the only ones you can get away with only bringing one are gonna be the, f uh, not first two, but first one and the third one. So, first one we're gonna get into is poison spell. I've got a little clip to show you from my good friend Joker about poison spells. Uh, I'm gonna go over these quick things real quick though. Damage per second, right? This does damage. That's one big thing about it. If you can keep the troop in it, it does damage, regardless. It also moves, er, reduces their movement speed. So as soon as they're in it, they get slowed down by 42%. That's big. Especially on those really fast troops like Valkyries or the Queen even. Right, where they can move pretty quickly. It also reduces their attack speed by 60%. That means timing other things, such as your queen ability on an E-drag, just got a whole lot easier. Okay, Now, one thing that uh, we need to kind of point out, right? it will only affect the troops that are in it, so you can miss it. And going into this raid, uh, where is it? There it is. Wait. I think this one was it. Yeah. So, going into the raid, right, we've got a level 4 poison, so it's not going to be all that good anyway, but it's a lot better than any other troop that he, or any other kind of spell that he could have used. We're just going to go into where he actually pulls it, and then... He actually just drops the poison on it, and everything starts to run away. One thing about poison spells, they only affect the troops inside of it, and if there's nothing to hold their attention inside of it, they will run away. It's unnecessary damage to them to sit in it, and they recently changed that within the last two years to do this, right? It used to be where you could just pull the clan castle troops, drop the poison. And what he's done here would have been perfect if that were the case. If he could have just kept all of these in here, that could have killed the queen, killed the loon, and gotten this to half health at the very least. But nothing came of it because there was nothing to keep them in there, right? Now, I'm not going to go into that raid because... 
he still did perfect after messing up on that. Even after doing that, he still got the two star. I can't be upset. But it would have probably been a three star had he known, and that's why I'm making this video, had he known how to use this spell, right? I'm putting this video together just because it gives my whole clan an easy place to come in and say, hey, how does that spell work again? Yo, go watch this video, check it out. You got timestamps for each one. I'll try to work on that as best I can and, you know, help them out. Because especially when it's just one spell that m mutilates the raid, right? Especially when it's such a useful spell, such as a poison spell, or a rage spell, or a heal spell. Just missing those, or not understanding exactly how they work, can make or break a raid. Right? So, big thing about poison, make sure the troop stays in it. By pulling the troops off to the side, using a queen, using some troops. Keep them still, keep their aggro, keep their attention, hold them in that poison. It does a lot of damage on its own. It saves your troops a lot of hassle because if it's a melee troop, they're going to be moving significantly slower and attacking significantly slower. Huge for Valkyries, huge for Pekkas, uh, witches even, right? Especially with this damage, it can almost kill a full witch. Actually, I think it can kill a witch. Uh, almost. Just about. Keep it in there for two seconds? Yeah, it'll kill her. Yeah, it'll, it'll melt her. Now, one thing to note, though, this damage says max damage per second. That's once it's, like, fully charged. Once they are completely intoxicated by this poison, that's when they'll start to take that massive damage spike. So the longer you hold them there by using little troops, right? I see a lot of people use a max poison and their queen. If you just use a max poison and, say... 20 archers and you just sit there and point them around in kind of a circle and just hold that troop in there these poisons can deal a lot of damage and then you only use 30 point 30 troop spots and that can make a huge impact on the fact that you still have your queen and it only costs i mean it, it, you can probably get away with only 20 but anyway Moving on past poison, we're going to jump right into the earthquake spell, and honestly, earthquakes are one of my least favorite because they never really get all that much better. Alright, here's why. The only thing that really matters is the radius, alright? The only thing that is actually going to do anything good is the radius, and I say that because with certain bases, especially such as my own, you've got a certain amount of space between each wall, right? So I've got one, two, three spaces, three and a half, maybe four spaces between these two walls. So if you place the, that spell perfectly between them, it can destroy this layer and this layer, right? But you do that between this corner and this corner, and you try to place it right there, it might open these two, like just the corner pieces, but it's not going to open it as much as you would like. Right? So, realistically, the only thing that matters is the radius. Because you will always need to bring four of these. No matter what the damage is, you always have to bring four. Okay, that's why I said I really don't like them, is that they never really get better. Because it's a percentage, you need it to get to a point where only three of them are required at max. Otherwise, it's not going to be worth it, right? There's no point in upgrading it other than for the radius because the damage is always going to be about the same. Four of these will take out any wall at any level. So, well, actually, I guess right now it's supposed to be five, because it's less than 20 so in theory I should need five of these actually and then it goes down into four which is okay so 
level three, I think, would be the level that you need it to be at. Let's see. Uh, yeah, level three, level four is what you would need it to be at. So it, it's kind of worth upgrading a little bit, but it's not really worth upgrading for anything more than the radius still, because you need so many of them, right? It says no wall can withstand the might of four earthquake spells, which means that it actually stacks up and does more damage, which means, yeah, at any level, you can just use four and boom. But that means that upgrading it is useless and there's really no point in it. But enough about why it's a bad spell. Let's go into why it's a good spell. If you've watched my recent video, you know that it's really good for opening big areas and just kind of opening a really large area into a base. Similarly to the jump spell, but jump spell is significantly better because, well, actually, they're about even. Here's why. You can place a perfectly aimed jump spell right here and jump over both of these, right? But if these were just a little bit wider apart, say like this right here, you can't jump a spell from this one to this one. But if you get a max earthquake and you drop it right in that middle line, you have the potential of destroying both of these wall segments. So you gotta understand that some bases with these larger walls that you wanna open up might be better to bring the four earthquakes rather than the one jump spell for the two housing space, all depending on what you need and how good your timing is because you can still miss time the jump spells but you can't really miss time an earthquake you just place all of them in the same spot as best you can and it opens up certain amounts of walls right it also destroys some buildings but realistically you're not going to notice that as much uh, and it's a very good thing to note too that destroying the buildings can be bad if you want your troops to go in because now there's nothing for them to target on the inside of that wall segment, right? Uh, the Town Hall 9 Witch Slap tutorial that I showed in my last video, it does destroy the buildings inside. And the only reason we were able to get inside of the base is because of the funnel that we had previously worked on. So this Earthquake spell is so specific to the raid that you're doing and where you're actually going to place it, right? So you need to know that it's going to take four spaces to open up a certain amount of walls. Now if that four spaces can open up a significant chunk and even more so than a jump spell could do, then it's worth trading them out to do this but only if it's worth really opening more than two jump spells are worth and that's where it gets complicated because now it's whether or not you need the troops on the inside of that area or if the buildings you destroyed are equally as useless and you just needed a way to kind of get out of the base because you can open up one side of the base and then raid Say you open up up here and then you raid in and now that they're up here they have a way to spread around a lot easier rather than getting stuck at this wall and dying or getting stuck at this wall and dying. You know, it all depends on what you're actually trying to do and how you're going to go about it. But in my opinion, one of the worst spells because it never truly gets better at what it does. Alright, into the haste spell. This one is another one that shows the duration, and it's a good reason why it does it. You can place these on the outside of a base, or kind of like in a, in a direct path for your loons, to get to a defense and destroy it quickly. One of the good things about loons is that they actually do pretty good damage, especially at this max level that I have. They've got three, 236 damage per second, right? So it doesn't attack every second. It attacks once every three seconds, which means that that bomb does like 400 damage, 600 damage, 700 damage, right? So when you've got like four of them, 
that's a lot of damage. I wish I knew how to edit this a little bit better and put that meme in. Just, that's a lot of damage. Anyway, uh, spell duration is pretty key because you can place one spell, push in a couple of loons, wait for them to die, or destroy the building, and then push more in behind it to secure even more damage on other buildings behind that. But you want to use this for the mobility speed because anything that passes through it allows you to travel with that speed for a certain amount of time, right? It gets your troops up to the wall, up to the defenses, up to the town hall, anything, right? Just super quick. And you only really need one or two and you've got 25 seconds on each one, so you can really use this, especially in my last video when I was talking about funneling. A lot of people in the pro leagues actually use haste and loons to funnel certain things. Did you know that one max loon could take out one max archer tower? Just one. Now imagine you've got a little square of just a bunch of defenses, and the only reason why you could normally not take those out is because your troops are so slow. Well, now you've got a solution. You get them in there, you get them done, right? Also, this is level 4. At max, it does go up to 30 seconds. And I think it's 50 movement speed increase. And some troops are already fast as is, right? Fastest troop around, minion, 32 movement speed. You give it 50? You're uh, looking at 82 movement speed. That's absolutely ridiculous. All right. So hay spell, highly recommended spell, especially for funneling, especially for getting what you want out of it. Now, I will remind people, accuracy is key with a lot of these. This has a very small range, right? It has less range than a rage, less range than a heal, about the same as a jump spell. And you have to be accurate. Right? If you place this too far to the left and your troops don't target the right building and they're going right outside of it, you're getting nothing out of this. Right? So accuracy is key. Knowing how troops actually move between certain items, right? So like giants and loons and hogs, if they go in and destroy a certain defense, which defense are they next to target? Right? Stuff like that will get this haste spell significantly more use, right? It's going to be a lot more valuable when you understand where troops are going and why. And then placing this in their path to get them there faster, get them out faster, whatever the case may be. Okay? Moving on, we've got Skeleton Spell. Okay? Skeleton Count goes up pretty high. Uh, 10 is past the halfway, so it never touches 20. But... 10 units for one spell space, that could be pretty useful. Now, I don't remember if skeletons tr will aggro to everything, but if they do aggro to everything, you can drop one skeleton to just kind of put a little bit of extra damage on a, uh, what's it called? On a max town hall 12, right? You can drop this on the 12, and then it just sits there and bops it a little bit. It's not going to do much because they don't have very much health, but it can at least activate it so other troops now are able to target it, such as the loons. Right? Uh, also, stuff like the eagle. If it's not covered by a lot of defenses, you can just drop a couple of these skeleton spells and they'll kill it for you. Right? Sacrifice a couple of these spell spaces to just guarantee that you kill a max level eagle and can save your warden for anything else? Big. That, that's actually huge. That can be game changing, right? Just based on placement. Now, skeleton spell and bat spell, pretty much the exact same, except bats only target defenses, and I know that for a fact, but also, you start out at 7, it's below the halfway, you can actually, I believe, get 
to 18 or 20 bats. I don't remember. But it can get up there pretty damn high. And you bring four of these into combat, and you can shred through defenses. The only thing you got to worry about is that they do group up a lot. They are an area splash prone uh, troop, right? Wizard towers, multi-target infernos, the Giga Tesla, giant air mines. It doesn't. It says the bats don't trigger the traps, but that doesn't mean that they can't be hit with your loons that do target the traps, trigger the traps, whatever, right? So one big thing about this is that you're gonna have to bring free spells or you use really well-timed warden to make sure that they can actually destroy certain things. But much like the uh, skeleton, if that uh, inferno is on its own and you can get these in there, even just one of these spells can make a big impact in the fact that it could potentially kill that and then l allow you to move on with the rest of your raid and not even have to worry about that, right? And it's not even just eagles, right? You can use this on infernos as long as you freeze it or it's a single target and not next to a wizard tower, right? So on those big bases where I can actually show you one right now because it's the one that's in practice on Town Hall 10 that I just did a video on, uh, this minor one, right? We're not looking at you. We're looking at these, right? Their wizard tower is off on the side, right? Wizard tower is way off on the side. There are air defenses right nearby, and these are multi-target infernos. So if you drop five of them in here, they're going to get melted. But if you drop five of them and a freeze, they can take that out easily. Or if these are set to single target, that's a free inferno. You don't even have to do anything. That's just a free inferno. Right? So, big thing about skeleton and bat spells is they're really good in taking out small buildings. They don't have a whole lot of damage, and that's why you take a lot of them. They're really squishy don't do a lot of damage, so you need to take four or five of them, right? They're also pretty small range, and they don't all spawn at once, so that's the other thing. In order to get the amount, the max amount spawned at one time, you need to use multiples, and then it also continuously spawns them, so you just see a massive flow of these troops, right? One of my good friends, Spread My Butter, uses this a lot. He does this a lot. Because he's got max, and I can ask him how many there actually are in a bat spell, but honestly, it doesn't really matter too much, because I won't recommend this to anybody unless it's maxed. And in, even then, it is such a specific raid that you won't be using these every single time you'll be using these because you notice hey that guy's got single targets and they're really clumped up and then his splash damage is really far away I'm gonna use this and a free spell boom half of the challenge just got eliminated right there right before your very eyes so that's gonna do it for the spell video um, you know I I said it earlier, I only did this mostly to point out the poison because of the raid that I saw. Uh, you know, I, I want to make a quick side note. Please, please don't be that guy to point out a mistake in clan chat, right? It's one thing coming from a leader, a co leader, you know, somebody that's been raiding for four years, five years and says, hey man, that was kind of stupid, what are you doing? Versus, you know, somebody that's on the same level as you, right? Maybe even somebody lower than you. So, you know, keep that all in mind. Keep all these spells in mind. And, uh, yeah. If you liked the video, enjoyed the video, or hated the video, leave a like anyway. I appreciate it. And do all that other fun stuff. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.